Today, I have gathered your favorite producers to get their tips to improve your production skills. I have added the links of each artist in the description below, but fasten your seat pass now and let's get to hear those exclusive production tips. Hey guys, my name is Maus Drescher and my tip for you is create your own style. Let me explain. I'm pretty sure we all had this moment when we listened to a track and we thought, man, this bassline is so on point, I just want to recreate it. And I think there's nothing wrong with it. For example, there is a certain afterlife sound and there's also a pretty good video on this YouTube channel right here. I don't know, I've never done this before. But back to the topic. I think it's totally fine if you get inspired by an artist and you want to use a certain technique he or she uses in their tracks, in your own tracks. That's fine. But you need to give it your own spin, your own touch. I think you should always reflect on yourself and think, why am I making music? Am I making music? to copy someone or am I making music to create something new and to express my own thoughts and feelings. And for me, that's always the latter one. You can be inspired by someone, but you need to give it your own touch and make your own signature sound out of it. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. Hi, guys, this is Blanca. And my tip is this one. Well, in my own creative process, sometimes I like to be surprised by chance. I like to be surprised by random results. If you are like me, I'm pretty sure that you like this too that I want to show you. It calls Melody Souls, and basically what it does is create random melodies for you. And it's quite nice. This is our guy. For example, here I choose the Mini V and I send the MIDI to the synthesizer. You can choose the key of a melody you are creating, the speed of your melody, the transpose, the swing, and the triplet. And here you will decide how your melody you looks like, like a simple melody, a complex melody, or you mix between both, uh, with light uh, vibes, dark vibes, or both. So let's say that I want a, a complex melody with a dark vibe. I press this pad and the melody is here and it starts to work it's quite nice okay now i want to choose the transpose plus 12 a complex melody with dark vibes let's see how it sounds with the loop that i created before is that if you like it some of these melodies you just can drag and drop to your project and edit as you wish it's quite cool one so this is my tip i hope you like it hi i'm francois from production music live and this tip is to layer synth sounds with drum samples to achieve a bit more edgy sound for more powerful tracks Here's my track, The Giant. In this break, I'm layering a bass with a percussion and a right to make it stand out more powerfully and also to cover more higher frequencies. Playing the bass solo, adding the perk, and adding the right, playing it all together, compared, We are getting much more edge and power into this element. And we're using the same trick in the drop section where we are layering a bass with a smooth attack together with a kick with a harsher transient. So this kick will help the bass get more edge and stand out in the mix. Thanks for watching and have fun producing. Hey guys, I welcome you to my little home studio here in Munich. And today I'm going to show you a little trick that I use when building beats in Ableton. I normally go to my splice folder and grab some, some loop I start with together with a kick. And then I grab the next loop 
And they don't fit together rhythmically, as you can hear. And for matching those two loops rhythmically, I have a little trick. In this case, I had to copy um, the groove I liked the most to another track and put delay on it so that the groove plays all 16s. Then I recorded the output from this track to this track. So next step is right click, it's extract groove. Now we go back to the loop that didn't fit with the first loop in our beat and apply our groove here from Groove Pool. As you can hear the swing was applied, it's the same swing the original loop here has. And you can push commit so it stays forever. Now the two little grooves are playing perfectly together. And you can start with sound design. Yeah, and this is how it sounds after like 30 minutes. Hey guys, this is Moplex and I'm a producer for Melodic Techno. I release on labels like the Yoki and Somatic. Today I want to show you a quick tip how to produce or process effect-based sounds. What I basically do is open Diva and load in a standard arpeggiato sound like that. You can use any synth if you want to. It's also working with Serum and other VSTs as well, sure. So I use that sound, then I um, open my guitar rig. I use pitch panel for that and go all the way down with that parameter. And then, then you got this distorted sound, very distorted and a lot of artifacts. So the last thing which is missing is just some reverb and some delay. And that's it. Hey, my name is Lauren Mia, and today I'm gonna give you a very important tip. My tip is that you want your low end to be in mono always. The low end is the highest amount of energy and the main source of energy from your track. So it's very difficult to mix to get it to sound crisp and centered and warm. It can easily sound muddy as many of you know. So having your low end in mono is the key to having a nice crisp and yummy low end mix. All you would really have to do is simply throw Ableton's utility onto your kick, bass and sub and hit bass mono. You can also adjust the hertz to your liking. What having your low end in mono essentially means is having the frequencies coming out of both monitors at the exact same time. And what this does is it helps your low end stay centered, warm, and also you avoid having it go out of phase when playing on a larger monitor systems in the future perhaps, or even now. So yeah, that's my tip. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out at Lauren Mia Music. I'm happy to connect and answer any other questions you may have. Salut à tous, c'est Alson, j'espère que vous allez bien. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous montrer une technique que j'ai utilisée sur pas mal de morceaux, et notamment sur mon prochain morceau, Serene, qui sortira en septembre sur Sinners. C'est une technique basée sur un arpeggiateur que j'utilise, mais en jouant sur un clavier, mais en une seule note à la fois. C'est vrai que d'habitude, on utilise un arpège à, à plusieurs notes pour décomposer un accord. Moi, j'ai utilisé cette technique pour vraiment improviser sur mon piano pendant que ma boucle de base tournait et en testant plein de mélodies pour trouver ma mélodie principale. Et c'est comme ça que je suis arrivé à obtenir un son comme ça. Si on le décompose, on se rend compte qu'avec le rate rapide ici en 1 16e et les deux étages, les, donc les trois octaves, si je reste sur une note, et à la fois si je fais une note courte, et donc avec tout le morceau qui tourne derrière et la mélodie que j'ai trouvée, ça donne quelque chose comme ceci.
Donc voilà, pour, euh, pour la technique que j'ai utilisée sur ce morceau, c'est une technique très simple à reproduire en utilisant ce schéma. Ça marche avec tous les synthés. Et moi, je trouve que ça permet d'apporter quelque chose de plus humain. Vu que l'arpégiateur, il est quantifié sur le BVM de la musique, on peut jouer euh, un peu n'importe comment sur le clavier, en fait, et l'ordinateur lui va quantifier. Mais on garde voilà, ce côté humain enregistré à la main. Donc voilà, c'était mon petit, euh, ma petite technique perso. J'espère que ça vous a plu et je vous dis à très bientôt. Hi folks, Rauch is here. Welcome to my little studio. Today I have a production tip for you. Really happy to take part in this project. And what I want to show you has to do with the hi-hats. So let's get into it. So like I told you, I want to show you how to add some more movement to the hi-hat, which is in my opinion one of the most important parts in a track. So I prepared a little loop for you. It goes like this. And now I go to MIDI effects and add some random. It's a preset, simple but effective. Turn the random down a little bit. And then I go to audio effects and add a vocoder and put it on the hi-hat track in front of the EQ. And now I can play around with the release. And I do a little automation here and you can see what happens. So enjoy, try it for yourself. That was my production tip for you. Bye, see you soon. Hello, Robert Babich here. And here comes my tip. And it's about getting your mix down right. And there's an easy method, even if your room is not treated right, or you don't have the best environment, you have to do following. Try to listen to your track and the lowest possible volume. That way, when you have done everything right and your mix down is well balanced, you will be able to hear all the elements in the lowest possible volume. And if any element is, is sticking out, like a super loud hi-hat or a kick drum, then you know you have to get that a bit lower. So. This way um, you are able to understand if your mix down is well balanced. A very easy way of doing this and it will help you a lot, believe me. So thank you. See you. Bye-bye. What's up YouTube? This is Whiskey and today I have extremely simple yet very effective tip for you. It is really important to think about where you place your clap sample when you produce your track. Let's say you have a kick and clap. Very simple, most of the genres has kick and clap. If your clap sample is actually quantized to the grid, you will lock the groove that you are looking for in your track. For example, the one single trick that you can do before you are going in to do drop, you can actually put it slightly before the grid point, like this. And it will almost feel like you are increasing the RPM. And if you are around the break, you can just move it after your grid and it will be feeling like a bit lagging. And there is one more very important thing when you move your clap in your grid point. When your kick and clap hits at exactly the same time, exactly at the grid, you will be having two very transient samples at the same time, which will lead to a big jump in your master. And take a look at our loudest point. Here in the short term max, you will see the max loudness level or max peak in track. So we are hitting around minus 3.4. And if I go back now and move the clap slightly to the right, maybe somewhere around here, and go back to master and take a look at the peak again. Just moving the clap slightly to the right, we have gained 1.4 dB headroom in our master and this is actually huge such a big headroom improvement with a super simple trick hope you like it